Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Morgan, and bid you all welcome back to Gothic 2. Last episode was a lot of chat. Today is going to be a lot more chat. Um, I think our objective today is going to be becoming an apprentice, which uh, is kind of a big production in this game. Um, but it's a necessary step to... It's actually not that necessary, um, but it's worth doing anyway. Really no reason not to. Um... But let's have a chat with this fellow here. He's just kind of been sitting here quietly all day. Hey, you're new in town, huh? That's yes. correct. And what about you? I've come from the mainland, and now I'm hanging around here. I'm almost out of gold, so all I can do now is join the militia, I guess. But I don't want to do that. I won't be slaughtered by those orcs on the king's behalf. I thought you had to be a citizen to join the militia. This guy apparently didn't come here and uh, doesn't have a job. So how is he going to join the militia? What can you tell me about the militia? One of the paladins has taken command. A certain Lord Andre. He's trying to mobilize half the city in case the orcs attack. But you need to be a citizen of the town in order to be admitted. As far as I know, if you're not a citizen, you can train anyway. But you won't be officially admitted. Well, that sounds rather silly. If you don't trust them to, uh, defend the city, but you'll give them the training and, uh, let them in on how the militia is organized. Seems like a bad idea. What else can you tell me about Lord Andre? He has taken over the position of judge as well. If you cause any trouble in this town, you're gonna have to answer to him. I was once in a brawl with a citizen. He went crying to Lord Andre and ratted me out. That little matter cost me 50 gold pieces. I was lucky that it happened at night, or others would have witnessed it. The more people complain about you in this town, the higher your penalty will be. So that's a heads up on how the crime system works in this town, which really only happens in town. It does actually happen on the farms to some extent, but only if you are a mercenary. We'll kind of cover that in time. Uh, but basically, if you cause any trouble um, picking fights anywhere around town except the harbor or you're caught stealing stuff, the more witnesses there are, it just pretty much increments your penalty by 50 gold each time. Hopefully, we won't run into that kind of trouble. Who did you fight with? with a fellow named Valentino. He often hangs out in the tavern near the temple. I'm not usually a violent person, but that guy needed his face rearranged in the worst way. Hmm. We'll have to keep that name in mind. I'm sure we'll run into him in due time. Has anything exciting happened? You could say that. They robbed Bosper the Bowmaker. What a brazen thing to do, I tell you. The Who fellow they? just ambled into the shop in broad daylight and grabbed himself a bow. And a Bosper bow? right after him, hollering, Stop right there, you rogue! But the thief was too fast. He never would have thought of that himself. Well, that is exciting. Bosper the Bowmaker, eh? I think we were... Uh, named, he was name-dropped as one of the potential masters we can apprentice with. Why don't we have a word with him? Welcome to my shop, stranger. I am Bosper. I craft bows and trade in furs. Hey, what brings you to Corinus? I need to get into the upper quarter. Where the paladins are? Forget it. You need to be a respected citizen here, or at least hold a decent job. As a stranger, you stand no chance of getting in. Hmm. We've heard that before. I'm looking for work. Hmm. I could use a new apprentice. The last one just gave up his job two days ago. Do you know anything about hunting, then? Well... I could teach you how to skin animals. I'll pay you well for every skin you bring me. Uh, learning how to skin animals is not necessarily, uh, a, uh, how you say, total qualification for being a hunter, but hey, at least we're halfway there. Why did your apprentice give up his job? All he said was that it had become too dangerous out there. If you're really interested, then you can ask him yourself. His name is Bartok. He's probably hanging out near Corrigan's Tavern. Go through the underpass from the smithy, then you're headed straight for it. I shall keep that in mind. I want to start as your apprentice. Before I take you on, I need to know, of course, whether you're any good at all. What do you want me to do for you? I will teach you how to skin an animal, and you will bring me, let's say, half a dozen wolf skins. Then I'll know that you have learned your trade. If it doesn't take you forever, and if the skins are in acceptable condition, 
I will take you on if you like. So, learning how to skin animals, I really only recommend if you're going to join Bosper as uh, an apprentice, because other than selling them, most animal skins, in fact, all animal skins, really have no value in this game. Um, they have no, like, use in crafting or anything like that, and uh, selling them to anybody else, you only get a paltry pittance of what uh, Bosper will... Uh, pay for them. He actually pays their full MSRP, as you say, uh, whereas everybody else only pays 15%. So, uh, we are actually going to join Bosper. I will rationalize that in time, so I am going to learn this. Teach me how to skin animals. Right. Listen, it's quite easy, really. You take a sharp blade and cut open the animal's belly. Then make a few small incisions on the inside of the legs, and you can peel off the skin. Bring me the wolf skins and we shall see. So he specifically wants wolf skins. I actually find it funny that we can get other more valuable skins and bring them to him. He does not accept those as substitutes. What if I want to sign on with one of the other masters? Uh, Balderdash. Balderdash. Harold and Matteo already have apprentices. Constantino the Alchemist is a loner, and he hasn't taken an apprentice in years. And as for Thorben, everyone knows he's dead broke. He probably couldn't even pay you. I, on the other hand, am in urgent need of an apprentice, and I pay well, too. But no matter where you want to sign on, you need the approval of all other masters from the lower part of town. That's actually a bald-faced lie. You do not need the, the approval of all the other masters. You only need three of the four. Will I get your approval to sign up with a different master? <sighs> all right, you shall have my approval. But on one condition. Work for me, at least for a short time. That way, you can find out for yourself whether you like my craft or not. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up liking it, and you'll stay with me. If you're good enough to sign on with me, you're also good enough for all others here. So, as we've seen, everybody pretty much has a condition for, uh... Either signing with them or getting their approval. I've heard that someone stole from you. Who told you that? Probably Bartok, huh? Never even Didn't met him. Did have anything better to tell you? Oh, well. Let me tell you, if I get hold of this bastard, he can say his prayers. I left the shop for only a moment. When I came back, I could only just see him leave with my bow on his shoulder. I called the guards right away, but the lowlife ran towards the harbor, and they lost him there. I lit a bonfire under their asses then, and they searched the entire harbor district. But they didn't find a thing. Those bumbling lackeys. I bet my bow is still in town somewhere. I informed the guards on both city gates, and they haven't seen anyone leave with my bow. When I get my hands on that bastard. Oh, I believe it. Show me your wares. So, Bosper does sell some things. I actually don't recommend selling anything to him. Let's see if I can make it happen. There is, does seem to be a glitch. I hardly know what to believe. Mm, maybe not this time. I never knew that. Okay, see, uh, everything I just sold him there disappeared from his inventory. Maybe it's just a close. I don't think you can ever buy back the clothes. I'm not sure you were ever actually able to intended to acquire them in the first place. But we'll keep one article. We'll keep the super snazzy suit on hand. I'm actually, I'm actually going to buy this, which is a little unusual. Because, normally I don't fuss much about armor. But at this point, that's actually a, quite a significant bonus. The leather belt, there's a couple uh, belts like this in the game where the it offers five protection against weapons and arrows. But that is increased to ten if you have the matching suit of armor. Excuse me. Uh, so what we have here, we have the leather armor which is 25, 25, and 0. Putting this on, we get 35, 30, 10, and 0. So, at this point, that's actually a pretty significant bonus, and we're going to hang on to that. I will hold on to this, though, for when we get a different suit later on. We might want that strength bonus back. Um, so, you referred to us... He referred us to a character named Bartok, his former apprentice, who was also a hunter. Will... Track out that guy later. He might have something uh, helpful for us. 
One thing I didn't show off last episode was actually trying to get into the upper quarter. There's nothing and what happens, on. which is should Balls. be pretty obvious. Only the citizens of the town and the king's troops can get into the upper end of the town. Never would have thought of that himself. Couldn't we make an exception? What? Yes. There are rules in this town. Rules that apply to everyone without itself. exception. If we let you break those you rules, it would be unfair towards all those who obey them. Oh, what is fair? I'm a respected citizen of Corinus. Let me pass. You are the dirt under my fingernails. Make yourself scarce. Oh, Mr. High and Mighty Paladin, standing here looking at a fucking gate all day. So superior. So, there really isn't much of a trick way to get into uh, the upper quarter, unfortunately. Uh, you can obviously glitch it with the sidestep trick that I showed you in episode Juan. But that's not really a good idea. I don't think anyone stops you if you're up there. But every time you try to get back out the gate... Whoops, I didn't mean to eat that. Uh, he's going to give you a hard time. I don't know, maybe we can uh, actually make it... Oh, but I don't have... <laughs> I, I need all those. The problem with dropping stuff is that you drop all of them. Actually, maybe we can grab it from here. <gasps> I can, sweet. I don't know, maybe we can pull this off. Nope. Maybe a little closer to that wall. Okay, we're on the threshold of a... Uh... Of where the music changes, so the music just kind of keeps looping here. Man, that's not gonna work. Whoops, that was too far. So yeah, we're not gonna be able to get into, into the upper quarter just yet. If you encounter those guards before asking Mateo about it, he actually does have a slightly different line. Um, I think it was P-Tac who reminded me of that. If that's incorrect, I will correct it in a subtitle. Hey. Ah, fresh face. You're not from Corinus, are you? This is not a good time for travelers. Bandits everywhere. No work, and now the farmers have risen up too. What winds have blown you here? I'm looking for work. Do you know anything about carpentry? The only thing I can make out of wood is a fire. And what about locks? Well... I'm sorry, but I can't use you if you know nothing about my trade. And I have no money to pay for an apprentice. What if I want to start an apprenticeship with one of the other masters here? All right, I shall give you my approval. But you had better get yourself the blessing of the gods first. Say, are you a man of faith? Uh, neither option really changes anything, but we'll, uh, we'll humor him. Yes, a most humble servant, Master Thorben. Then go <laughs> to Vatras, that like it was the his own of name. Adenos, and have him give you his blessing. He will tell you where you can find a priest of Inos. You should get his blessing, too. Once you have received the blessing of the gods, I shall vote for you. I'm actually kind of amused that, like, Inos is the primary faith for most people in Mertana and Corinus. So the fact that they can't he can't tell you where to find a priest of Inos, but can tell you where to find a priest of Adenos. Kind of amuses me. So, you know a lot about locks. What good is a fine chest without a fine lock? I make my own locks. That way, I can at least be sure I haven't built my chest that sturdy for nothing. A poorly made lock is easy to break. And there are plenty of thieves about in Corinus, especially lately. Can you teach me how to pick locks? Hmm, I don't know whether you can be trusted or not. For all I know, you might be one of those layabouts who only come to town to empty the chests of honest people. I'm not going to teach thought. you anything before I'm convinced that you're an honest fellow. Hmm, so we have to prove our sincerity to him. Have you had an apprentice before? Yes, and not too long ago. And what happened? His name is Elvridge. He's my nephew. I was quite pleased with him, actually, but one day he simply didn't show up for work. Where is Elvridge now? How would I know? He kept hanging around that filthy brothel by the harbor. I wouldn't be surprised if he's still warming the bed of some whore down there. <laughs> I don't understand why they left a sniffin'. 
How long has it been since you saw him? I guess it must be about two weeks. You didn't get that from me. Have you reported that to the militia? Of course I have. They were supposed to catch him and see to it that the Lazy Bones does his work. But I already regret that. He can do whatever he wants. Sooner or later he'll realize he'll get nowhere in Corinus without a decent job. Is that so? I don't think it's a responsibility of the militia to make sure that your apprentice goes to work. I think you're, you're misusing emergency services here. It's all just gossip. What do you know about the Paladins? Not much. They arrived by ship two weeks ago from the mainland. Since then, they've withdrawn to the upper end of town. Nobody here really knows exactly why they have come. Many are afraid of an attack by the orcs. I suppose, however, that they are here to quell the farmer's rebellion. I don't think that's really a good use of, uh, holy warriors like them. Do you know anything about the peasants' rebellion? Rumor has it that Onar, the landowner, has hired mercenaries to keep the king's troops from breathing down his neck. He was probably tired of having to throw his harvest along with his livestock at paladins and militia. All we notice of this in town is that the food prices keep rising. Onar's farm lies far to the east of here. We wouldn't know if there's any fighting going on there. And if you want to know more, ask the merchants in the marketplace. They get around the island more than I do. It, it's kind of like flip-flopped. Uh, some people seem to... Some people seem to suggest that Onar uh, revolted before the Paladins even arrived, such as Thorben here. Other ones say that the revolt happened after the Paladins arrived, when the uh, taxes on grain and livestock ra rose as a result. So it's just another one of those uh, continuity errors that Pranobites at this point is quite famous for. I've come about Gritta, my niece. What's your business with her? This isn't about money, is it? She owes 100 gold pieces to the merchant Matteo. Tell me this isn't true. Ever since that little piece of work moved in with me, I've had nothing but trouble. She's in debt with practically every single merchant in town. I had to borrow 200 gold pieces from Lamar, the moneylender, just to settle her debts. And now this. Gritta should be in the house. Go ahead, ask her. But I tell you this, she doesn't have a single gold piece. We shall see. Oh, that's what they all say. Now, before we go deal with Gritta, I'm actually going to set up, uh... There's quite a few different ways to deal with this, and, uh... Just the other day, I learned my new favorite way to do it. So, I'm going to go set that up first. And to do that, we need to hop behind Mateo's house here. Uh, there's this gentleman Smith here. We'll have a chat with him, but he actually doesn't really have a whole lot for us. What led you into this poor area? What are you looking for here? I've lost my way. Then watch out that you aren't robbed. It would seem that we have a few thieves in the city who would steal stuff from the rich people. The city guard recently turned the Hobbit district upside down, but they didn't find anything. Interesting. What do you know about the thieves? Nothing. But all the citizens are scared and have become distrustful, particularly towards strangers. Don't get caught in strange houses. No one takes kindly to that. Yeah, you gotta protect yourself against thieves. A sturdy cudgel works best. I find a knife between the ribs works even better. Can you teach me anything? Ah, oh, I'm forging a few fittings and nails and repairing iron pots. But I don't know enough about forging weapons to be able to instruct you. And if you want to learn that, go see Harrod. He sure knows how to forge weapons. But if you want to train your muscles a bit, well, I can help you with that. How much do you charge for the training? Fifty gold pieces, and I'll help you to become stronger. Now, he is the first strength trainer that we encounter, but I believe Larius can do it as well, so that's kind of a lie. Uh, so basically, there's no reason to pay his fee for it. We've got cheaper alternatives everywhere else. By cheaper, I of course mean free. Uh, no real sign on this. He says not to go into strange houses, but uh, this turns out to actually be an alchemist. Who, uh, we need to speak at for my, uh, my Grandmaster plan. Ah, you've come just in time. I'm in need of an assistant for a magic experiment. I'm sure you're eager to do me a favor for science's sake. Easy, my friend. 
First, tell me what this is all about. I have developed a new spell, a spell of oblivion. I've already successfully carried out a few practical applications, but I don't have time to conduct one final test. Tell me more about the experiment and the spell. The spell serves to make somebody forget various events. So far, I have only found it to work when the person in question is angry, for instance, if he has been knocked down or robbed. Even if he has only witnessed such a deed, he will scratch it from his memory. So I'm supposed to knock somebody down and then put a spell on him? I uh, missed your lines there, buddy. And also there, buddy. Yes, I think you get the point. But to make somebody angry, it is enough to attack him. You don't have to knock him down. So you should pick somebody who's by himself. If there are other people around, you'll just get into trouble with Lord Andre. Also, it makes no sense to cast the spell on someone who's busy attacking you. Wait for the right moment. So why he specifies that uh, you don't need to actually knock them down is confusing to me because you actually kind of do. You either need to knock them down or run away so they stop coming after you. But as long as they're aggroed and they're going to keep coming after you, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. What's in it for me if I help you? I could teach you how to brew potions. I know the recipes for healing and mana essences and for potions of great speed. AKA speed potions. All right, I'll try out that spell. Then take this spell scroll and find yourself a suitable guinea pig. I already Once have one done, in mind. Come back and tell me how it went. About the experiment. Have you been successful then? Or have you just wasted the spell scroll? Huh? If you need more spell scrolls, you can buy them from me. Show me your wares. So, wow, okay, I forgot he sold all these things. Um, if you want, you can buy more of them, but we can actually pick these up from him. Before we uh, press on any further, I want to buy this. This is actually a very useful scroll. It's quite expensive. Were very useful and as is this the rest of them not so much and the reason I'm buying these now is uh, there's a bit of a odd issue where if you beat down a merchant uh, their most of their uh, merchant inventory tends to disappear that's actually only true if you loot them I think but even though you don't loot any of their merchant inventory, they don't have it again when you try and open up their shop. So, that's kind of an issue. And that's why I wanted to grab those now, because my plan for this experiment, as we know, if we beat up people in the harbor, they don't really care, they don't stay angry, but they do care if you... Filthy thief, just you wait. I don't know why I locked on a stupid saw. So they do care if you rob them. And that's a perfect opportunity to uh, test this scroll. As I said, we have to knock him down because otherwise he stays angry and will just attack us every time he sees us. And that doesn't, that makes, basically the scroll doesn't work as long as they're still pissed. You have to have knocked them down and gotten them to at least be pacified. And that's how that do. I'm actually not going to rob anything else. I just want these, because we're going to be using those again. I want to see if that still bugs out his merchant inventory. If it does, we'll just have to live with it. So, you cannot... I don't think you can cast it on them while they're on the ground. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. i got plenty of spare. We'll talk about that. Where's he off to in such a damn hurry? Oh, wow. It did work. I used the spell scroll. Fine, <clears throat> fine. And were you successful? Yes, clearly. Worked. Excellent. One small success for science, but a big one for me. Now, I can use my time to instruct you in the arts of alchemy. I could also give you some useful things if you want. 
Give or sell? Shop. All right, nope, he still loses the inventory. So I think if you knock a merchant down, they lose their inventory, which is annoying. Instruct me in the to prepare a potion. At the alchemist's bench, you need a laboratory flask. And you're going to need different plants or other ingredients for each potion. Uh, so I'm not going to learn any of these now. I actually don't plan to learn the healing or mana potions. Because we usually find more than enough. I actually meant to, uh... Meant to rob the rest of him while he was, uh... Down. Since I haven't. Can you just... Please? Thank you. Uh, we'll just knock him down again. As I said, knocking him down doesn't piss him off, so we don't have to worry about blasting him again. I just want to be able to grab all this. I know nothing about picking locks. That's right. I don't know anything about picking locks. Oh, well. At least we got plenty of Oblivion Scrolls, if and when we need them. But, as I said, this is something we need. Um, I'm actually surprised they didn't uh, account for the player just beating him up to test the scroll. Because it seems like such an obvious solution, and it's hilarious to me. Anyway, we needed that for my final uh, plan for dealing with Grita and getting the debt back. But I'm going to run through all the options, because they all have kind of a slightly different outcome. First things first. One easy way to get the money. Never heard a thing. You notice how nobody reacts, because nobody actually witnessed it, but, uh... Somehow, news travels quickly. Here's your 100 gold pieces. That gold has Gritta's blood on it. I didn't say anything about you killing her. You didn't say anything about not killing her. I don't anything to do with this business. You can forget our deal and never speak to me about it again. Well, can't get his approval. I wonder if Thorben is pissed off. You have murdered my Gritta. I shall never forgive you. Out of my sight, you murderer. So the funny thing is, since nobody actually witnessed it, but it is a scripted event, you never get in trouble for it. It's just these two people never talk to you. Now, that's the problem. Uh, we got two masters who will not approve of you now. And no, I've tested it. Oblivion does not make them forget what you did. Hey, you! You have murdered my Gritta. I shall... So, just like that, we cannot uh, become an apprentice. So don't kill Gritta. We can try actually speaking with her, though. Hey, you! What do you want, stranger? If you've come to beg, I must disappoint you. I am a poor widow. My name is Gritta. Ever since my husband died, I have been running the household for my uncle Thorobin. Oh, really? How's it going? Same as always, but I don't want to complain. Oh, don't you? You already have. Mateo sent me. You still owe him some gold. He wants his money? What for? The goods he delivered were flawed, bad fabric, and bad seams. And did you look at the colors? Those are not the colors I ordered. That's fraud, that is. Let me tell you, back when my husband was alive, he wouldn't have dared to do that. Oh, my poor husband. Such a good man he was. Handsome, hardworking, a gentleman of the old school. We had it all. Wealth, happiness. Sometimes we were even invited to high society events. The festivities, all the beautiful clothes and hairdos, the fine dining and civilized conversations. Everything was better back then. No one would have dared to humiliate the heart of a poor widow with such ridiculous claims. Whatever shall I do? My pension is barely enough to make ends meet, and times are getting even rougher. One sees it everywhere. People must scrimp and save. It's been weeks since the last ship came to town. My husband was the captain of a merchant ship. Actually, he even owned the ship. From his long journeys, he always brought me presents. Exquisite fabrics from the mainland. Precious spices from the southern countries. Most people haven't even heard of these things. But then, one day, I got the tidings that the Gritta had sunk. 
That was the name of the ship. My husband called it that out of love for me. I wept and prayed that my husband had survived the disaster. Every day I hoped to hear from him, but all my longing was in vain. May Innes have mercy on his soul. May he rest in peace. Since that time, I have been living under these modest circumstances, and now this soulless, callous Mateo is after the last bit of my life savings. Please have mercy on a poor woman. Back when my husband was alive, he wouldn't have dared to do that. Oh, my poor husband. Oh, we're going in circles here, woman. Cut it out. Where's the gold? But I don't have the gold. I'm only a poor widow. Fork over the dough, or I'll slug you one. You're nothing but a common thug. Go ahead, draw your weapon, and I'll call the guards. Oh, will you? Why are you staring like an idiot? You won't dare to attack me anyway. Oh, won't I? Put away that weapon. Nah. So you'll notice that she gives zero XP when you knock her down. She is the only uh, NPC in the game that I'm aware of that is literally level zero. Anyway, we can just knock her down and take it. Well, I'm curious what she says when she gets back up. Oh man, my head. Hey. You're a brutal thug. I want nothing to do with you. Lord Andre will hear about what you've done. Oh, will he? Well, we got the money. We can give it to uh, Mateo, but I think Thorben will like to hear that his daughter uh, has been racking up debts and could afford them all along. Your niece had 100 gold pieces. What? The brazen little serpent. That was my gold. She took it from my chest. Give it back to me. I have to pay off Lamar first. Mateo can get his money later. Uh, if we insist on taking it, this, uh, that kind of... It's not really a good idea. I actually recommend giving it back, and you'll see why in a moment. Here's your gold. Who the hell's this weirdo? Now I have at least part of the money I owe Lamar. I can't believe she had the audacity to take my gold. From what I know of this little viper, I'm sure she'll run straight to the city guard and accuse you too. I shall see to it that the matter is settled. Sweet. So he actually covers for us because he doesn't believe that we beat up his niece. So, uh, we gave the money back, which means if we want to pay off Mateo at this point, we have to deliver the gold to him out of our own pocket. Uh, the other way to do this... And by the way, giving the gold back to Thorbin, the reason we do that is because it allows... He, as a result of giving that back, we can, uh, buy lock... Uh, we can learn how to pick locks from him. Can you teach me how to pick locks? You have brought me the 100 gold pieces. That is very decent of you. I am almost embarrassed, but I must ask even more of you. If I cannot pay back my debt to Lamar soon, he's going to send his thugs after me. Give me another hundred gold pieces, and I shall instruct you. Now, I will not do that now. Maybe later. So, ignore that uh, subtitle there, even though it's asked how much do you charge. Um, that actually cancels out giving him the money. Uh, so, basically, we give him the 100 gold back, and he asks for another 100 gold on top of that, which means we pay him 100 gold and give Mateo 100 gold. Essentially, all told, learning how to pick locks from him uh, costs 200 gold doing it that way. There is another way to do this, which I don't recommend because it actually makes learning how to pick locks even more expensive. But I'll show that off this time. And no, we're not going through her whole sob story this time. Hey! What do you want, my- Yes, yes. Mateo sent me. You still owe- He wants his money and let- Oh, my poor husband. Cut it out. Where's the gold? But I don't have the gold. I'm only a poor widow. If we agree to pay the sum for her, we'll see why that's actually a terrible idea. I'm gonna pay the sum for you. You would do that for me? Oh, I knew you weren't a greedy bastard like that Mateo. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Come back once you've taken care of that. I want to show you my gratitude. Ooh, -hoo, tempting. And no, it doesn't work out like you think, so it's still not worth it. But this time we gotta go speak with Mateo first. 
Here's your 100 gold pieces. You want to pay for her? <laughs> I'd have preferred it if you'd squeezed it out of her. Still, oh, I'll squeeze gold out of her pieces later. Is 100 gold pieces. You've held up your part of the deal. Alright, so that means he will give us his approval when asked. Got my own opinion. Let's chat up Thorben now. Hey, you! It's a bad business. Can you teach me how to pick locks? You have paid Gritta's debt with Mateo. You seem to be a decent fellow. I shall teach you what you want to know. However, I cannot do it for free. I still have a mountain of debts, and I need the money. How much do you charge? 200 gold pieces. So, you see that there. We paid 100 gold out of our own pocket to Mateo. That means we are in the hole 100 gold. He's asking for another 200 on top of that. Learning how Maybe to pick like locks this way costs 300 gold pieces total. Doing it by taking the money from Gritta instead of uh, paying it for her costs us 200 in total. Which is hey, ridiculous. You. I have no idea why he charges twice you as to much. Pay for me. I want to show you my gratitude. Here's a bottle of wine which my husband, may Inos rest his soul, brought back from the southern islands. Also, I'm going to spread the news around. At last there's somebody in town whose virtue... Yeah, yeah, never mind. Oh, what a load of crap. This is just a generic bottle of wine. It probably came from everywhere else. Like, it's literally no different. Where the hell is it? It's the same damn wine that we find everywhere else. And when she says she'll spread the word around, I don't think anybody actually hears it. <laughs> so, it's really not worth it. Anyway, my recommendation is, uh, before you even talk to her... One smack. Take everything. Wow, total whiff there, buddy. Some of that. Nothing there. I know nothing about picking locks. Oh, I will soon. Also, something I always forget. Oh, this is man, my one of the head. few book stands outside of Zardus' Tower that actually does give you XP for reading it. So, go for it. Hey, you! What do you want, stranger? If you come to so she's completely forgotten that we robbed her. Poor widow. My name is Gritta. And if we Mateo demand the money now, cut it out. Where's the gold? But I don't have. Then we'll simply sell a few of your togs. I'm sure you've still got a bunch of stuff in your closet. How dare you, uncouth lout! All right, here, take the gold. See, <laughs> that wasn't so hard. And now, will you please leave my house? Tartly, eh? So, by taking her gold, it actually makes sense that, uh, she, that Thorben says she, he t she took the gold from him because she no longer had any gold to actually pay for it herself. Hey, you! And so basically, we give his gold back to him and pocket the other hundred that we robbed from her. Your niece had 100 gold pieces. What? The brazen little serpent. That was my gold. She took it from my chest. Give it back to me. I have to pay off Lamar first. Mateo can get his money later. Here's your gold. Thanks. Now I have at least part of the money I owe Lamar. I can't believe she had the audacity to take my gold. Oh, she did. Can you teach me how to pick locks? You have brought me the 100 gold pieces. That is very decent of you. I am almost embarrassed, but I must ask even more of you. If I cannot pay back my debt to Lamar soon, he's going to send his thugs after me. Give me another hundred gold pieces, and I shall instruct you. So, having basically gotten Mateo's money for free, this hundred gold is the only thing that comes out of our pocket. Which means... Uh, well, we effectively learn how to pick locks for free, and then just pay Mateo the extra hundred. So, this is the cheapest way to learn how to pick locks. Fine. Here are 100 gold pieces. In that case, we can start whenever you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. Teach me how to pick a lock. All you need is a lock pick. If you move it carefully left and right in the lock, you can unbolt the mechanism. But if you move it too much or too fast in the wrong direction, it will snap right off. The more adept you become, the fewer lockpicks you are going to need. 
that's all there is to it, really. We will get into lockpicking once I have a, a lock to pick. But basically, the way he describes it is not how you actually pick a lock. Because moving a lockpick left or right does not engage the tumblers in a lock. So that makes no sense. But anyway, we'll touch on that. We'll touch on how that works in this game, at least, in due time. Here's your 100 gold pieces. And? Did she cause any problems? None to speak of. Good. You've held up your part of the deal. Damn right I have. Help me sign on as an apprentice with one of the masters. Don't worry. I'll keep my part of the bargain. Bargain. The other masters will only hear the best about you from me. All right. Well, that leaves two more masters to speak at. One of them we've been seeing in the background all along. New in the city, huh? I'm Brian. I'm Master Harriet's apprentice. What's it like to be the Smith's apprentice? Why do you ask? You want to be my successor? Maybe. Why not? I'm almost done with my apprenticeship, and then I'm going to leave the city. But not because of Harriet. He is a good master. I have learned a lot from him. Why do you want to leave this town? Because the people here are getting on my nerves, above all the other masters. I still remember what a fuss it was getting accepted as an apprentice with Harrod. Really, every one of them jokers had something to say about it. I want to decide Maybe it's just that weird for myself mustache yours. who I can or can't take as an apprentice. Who are the other masters? Well, there's Thorpin the Carpenter, Bosper the Bowmaker, Constantino the Alchemist, and Matteo. He sells armor, but first of all, he's a merchant. All the masters have their houses here on the street, and Constantino's shop is in the underpass to the temple. Tell me more about Master Harad. He's not in a very good mood right now. A few days ago, the paladins came and ordered him to forge some swords for them. They've even forbidden him to sell swords to anyone else. Now he slaves day and night to finish the job as quickly as possible. Will it ever change? Can I buy weapons from you? Not really. I'm merely an assistant. The weapons that are made in this smithy are collected by the militia and taken to the towers where they're stored. But if it has anything to do with forging, maybe I can help you. He doesn't see that. What can I get from you? I can sell you some steel billets. Steel billets, eh? Well, we don't need those. I'm looking for work. Hmm. I could use a new apprentice. Brian will have finished his apprenticeship soon, and then he'll leave the city. Are you good for anything? Well, if you damn, mean, that's a loaded do question. I know blacksmith's work? No, that's not what I meant. Sooner or later, the orcs are going to lay siege to the city, and then the only men who will count will be those who are in a position to defend our city. And I won't take on anyone as an apprentice who will disgrace me by fleeing the city with the women and the good-for-nothings instead of holding the fort here with the men. I'm not a good-for-nothing. Those are big words. Can you back them up with big deeds? What are you getting at? Bring me an orc's weapon. Orcs Whoa. have been seen near the city. With a bit of luck, you won't have to search for long. If you manage to bring one down, I'll take you on as an apprentice. Provided Jesus. the other masters agree. Did frickin' Brian have to take down a damn orc? You hardly know who to believe these days. Can I sign on as an apprentice with a different master? The other masters may well approve. But I will only give you my approval when you first prove that you're good for something. Jeez, out of all of them, Brian like mocked the other masters for being so touchy and... Herod is the most demanding out of all of them. Do you sell weapons too? Forget it. Everything I make goes to the paladins or the militia. I have a commission for 100 swords from Lord Hagen. He wants to equip the city guard. So, if you are questioning your ability to take down an orc, which uh, is a fair question, you can actually ask him for a different task. Hmm. What do you want? If you press him. Let's talk again about that orc thing. What? I'm not touching that. An orc is a damn tough opponent. Mm. Looking at you, you might be right. You don't have much meat on your bones. But that can change. 
Nevertheless, you have to prove to me that you have the courage to fight. So, couldn't it be something slightly smaller? Hmm. Hakon, the weapons dealer in the marketplace, told me that he was attacked by bandits a few days ago. The bastards are said to be roaming around somewhere outside the East Gate. Those cowardly rogues shouldn't be terribly bright. Hunt the bastards down. Every single one of them. Then I'll know that we can use you here in the city. So the reason I don't recommend asking for that is, first of all, the bandits are actually tougher to deal with than an orc is. Especially because there's actually a cheat way to get an orc weapon. Um, but also, if you get that task from Herod... We can still get the same task from Hakon, who he mentioned later. The difference is, if we get the task from Herod first, Hakon won't pay us for it. You're quite a good fighter, huh? That's not How much I is the matter worth to you? You want to get in Herod's good books, don't you? I don't think I should have to pay you for this. So, we will not ask for that task now. Because, uh, we would rather get a reward from Hakon instead. What do you want? I'm not giving anything away. I'm looking to become an apprentice. Really? And with whom are you going to sign up? I want to sign up with you as an apprentice. With me? No! I have already had the dubious pleasure once of grappling with an apprentice. That's quite enough for me. I invested several years in his education, and in the end, the poor fool up and poisoned himself. Go sign up with one of the other masters. What will I have to do to become your apprentice? <sighs> I couldn't bear yet another dilettante on my conscience. There is a multitude of herbs out there. Used in different variations, they develop the most diverse effects. You probably don't even know half of them. I have more than half of them in my pocket. Here. This is a list of the most important plants. Bring me a plant of each kind, and I might reconsider taking you in as an apprentice. I want to sign up with one of the other masters. You have come to ask my approval? Hmm. As far as I'm concerned, you can sign up with whoever you like. So, he gives us uh, his blanket approval for anybody else, but if we want to work for him, he makes us work damn hard for it. I'm in need of healing. Why? Are you injured? Yes. There's barely a scratch on you. And I have more important things to do than to talk to you. <laughs> Damn. Blows us off. So, this, um... This list of herbs... Basically, is just one of everything. And we have one of everything, except for King Sorrel. Which is the, uh... The last one we need to get. Now, for so Thorbin, we need blessings. We need one from Vatras. So let's interrupt his storytelling here. Uh, we'll bring up the monastery, the, get into the monastery later. I'd rather keep that all in its own episode. I'm asking you blessing. Why should I give you my blessing, stranger? We're not I strangers. I want to start an apprenticeship with one of the masters in the lower part of town. Go with the blessing of Adonos, my son. Well, that was easy. Now, in vanilla Gothic 2, not Gothic 1, um, in order to get that blessing, you would have had to go through the question and answer thing that we did with him earlier. But they re repurposed that for the uh, Ring of Water instead. Where can I find a priest of Inos? The best thing would be to look around the marketplace. You will find an emissary of the monastery there. An emissary? Go speak at the emissary. So, this is uh, something I did a an experiment on before, but I forgot how it played out. Essentially, when we go to uh, talk to the Priest of Innos, the donation actually varies depending on um, how much money you have in your inventory now. That gentleman on the bench, you might recognize him even from this distance. Do not go near him now. I don't want to deal with that right now, so we will avoid him. This is the marketplace. This is the other uh, gate. The... Eastgate? That's what I've always said. Eastgate. Um, this is so the, where I... we came in the other time. Uh, the end of the first episode. Really? But How interesting. we're back here now, and uh, this gentleman is who we need to speak at. To uh, so I have 355 gold in my pockets now. Let's see how much he takes and how much XP we get if we do if we That's do his donation now. What can now. I do for you? 
Are you seeking spiritual comfort? Do you want to direct a prayer to our Lord Enos or donate some gold for his church? Church. <laughs> I just love the way he says that. Church. Church, 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 church. Where do you come from? I come from the Monastery of the Magicians, which lies in the mountains. We accept everyone there who is pure of heart and feels the desire to serve our almighty Lord in us. Go away. Don't tell me that. I don't feel like going through all this now. This is too much. But that's so, as I said, uh, his donations depend on how much you have with you when you approach him. So, how much does a donation usually run to here? Well... That depends on what percentage you want to give, son. Go away, don't tell me that. Let me see how That's much you brought. Hmm. Hmm. I don't you like the noises he makes when he touches my coin purse. Yeah, the Lord the says, give if you have. The church accepts your generous donation. I bless you in the name of Inos, for he is light and righteousness. Right, so he takes 50 gold if we have more than 100. I want to approach him with less, and the easiest way to do that is the same, pretty much the same way um, we dealt with the bandit who gave us the name of Dexter. Drop our gold now. If we were to um, approach him without money, he would basically spurn us without giving us a blessing, and we would have to pay even more to get it from him later. And it's gonna get even worse. I just want to find a straight-up merchant who doesn't have a whole lot of chat. So I just want to sell a couple things I'm so we Zorus, can get to a little bit of gold. Potions. Do you need an essence of healing or a magic elixir? Then you've come to the right place. It works all day too. Show me your wares. I just received I some new potions. Me. My guest, Master Darren, the what fire magician, brought them along from the monastery. Oh, how kind of him. He's also got a shit ton of scrolls. For some reason, in Night of the Raven, merchants sell a lot more spell scrolls than they did in Vanilla. Uh, just a tip. Do not sell gold nuggets and do not sell silver chalices. We are going to... Oop, we are going to sell these tools enough to get us above 10 gold pieces. So that is the minimum that Darren will accept from us. What can... Yes, yes, spiritual comfort. So, how much does a donation usually run to here? Well, that depends on what percentage you want to give, son. Let me see how much you brought. Well, you don't have much, but neither are you poor. Ten gold pieces for in us. We live modestly. Modestly, that's all my money. For he is light and righteousness. So that, uh, the XP reward is the same no matter how much you give him, which is good to know. Where do you come from? I come from the Monastery of the Magicians, which lies in the mountains. We accept everyone there who is pure of heart and feels the desire to serve our almighty Lord in us. What are you doing in town? I have discussions with the paladins and support the citizens with my advice and with helpful words. Helpful words. Particularly in these difficult times, it is our duty to be there for the people and to help the poor. I can't take care of everything for everybody. I am poor. So, you are impoverished. No wonder in these times. Take this gold. It should help you. But you should really look for work. Then you will see how quickly gold comes to you. And then you may everybody. give to the church of Inos as she has everybody given to now. you. Sweet, we got 20 gold. I'll add that to this stack over here. So if you don't have much or any money in your inventory, uh, you can squeeze him for a little bit of gold, which is hilarious to me. But at least he's sincere. He does actually help the impoverished. It's just very easy to feign poverty in this game. Um, so, as stated, we need one more uh, herb for Constantino. And I will show you the easiest place to find one, which is up the road here. Hey, hey, not hey, so hey. fast. Strolling about alone out here is dangerous. Where do you come from? From the city. Well, well. Then what are you doing wandering around out here, so far from the protective walls of the city? It's only ten steps, dude. What's so dangerous out here? Many things. 
I bet you'll be yelling for my help after the next bend in the road. Jeez, what a terrible island we live on then. Just assuming I would fall back on your help, uh, how much would that cost me? I am merely a humble servant of the king and would not enjoy fleecing a helpless little citizen of the realm. But you know, if you put it like that, I wouldn't object to a little financial backing to promote our future business relationship. Ten gold coins should do for starters. What do you think? Oh, fine. Why not? Here's your ten coins. Terrific. If you need my help, you know where to find me. But please do me a favor. Don't come to me with any trifles. I can't stand that, you hear? So if we uh, try to ask him to help us with anything that's not a real problem, he won't help us. But I get the feeling we will actually uh, need his services later. Alright, so we got some real assholes up here now. And I'll show you how these behave a little bit differently. They're actually easier to fight than the youngins. So since they love to do the charge and bite, they're easy to backstep. No, I didn't want him to come after it. I wanted to kill it myself. Now right, he's gonna steal the kill. One less monster around. All right, well we got one, one thingamajig, one wolf skin for Bosper. This guy almost nicked the kill on us though. I didn't pay for your help just so you could steal my XP. Anyway, there's a couple more wolves here. We'll deal with them. One after the other. But because I removed the um, strength belt, I'm not really doing any more than minimum damage to these. Which is unfortunate, but we can manage because we have what we lack in oomph, we have in skills. So this only gets us halfway. These three wolves only get us halfway to what Bosper asked us for. There are places you can find wolf skins to basically steal. Which is what I normally do, but I actually have a different plan today. So this is going to be a slightly longer episode than uh, the last one. Just because we have a lot to get through. Thankfully we got our blessings. Where the hell did I find this many sausages? We got our blessings, so we can get Thorbin's approval. We got everybody else's. All we need is Constantino's, which, as I said, you can find a King Sorrel right up the bend here. Uh, right next to the stump. It's the easiest King Sorrel to find. And that's everything we need to give the Constantino. Now, King Sorrels are important, as are many of the other herbs we've got to give away, because they help us make potions with permanent stat bonuses. So you might be remiss to give them away to Constantino. I like to do it now for the little bonus XP that we get. As stated, we don't need all the Master's approval, so you can skip him if you want to hang on to this stuff. Uh, but I want the extra XP. Actually, since he gives the approval anyway, it doesn't matter. But this is just to get to sign on with him. But I'm going to s do it just because I want to keep... I want to get the little extra XP. About the plants. If you cannot handle that by yourself, you won't be any good as an alchemist either. Is that so? I've got all the plants I was supposed to bring you. What? You're pulling my leg, right? By Adonis. It's all there, all right. Who knows? Maybe someday you could make a decent alchemist after all. Well, you never know. Show me your wares. So all the plants we give him, he hangs on to, and we can buy them back later. So when I need to make a potion, uh, that extra, that 500 gold won't really be that much of a problem. Can I become your apprentice now? As far as I'm concerned, all that matters to Herod is that you will be actually able didn't mean to, to click on this. the city if it is attacked by orcs. But he thinks you're a coward. Bosper has been quite reluctant to comment on your qualities. I suppose he would like to take you on as an apprentice himself. To withhold one's approval for this reason is certainly not an honorable thing to do. But if all other masters approve, you won't need his vote. Thorben is a very religious man. He will only give you his approval with the blessing of the gods. As for Matteo, he's singing your praises high and low. You need the approval of at least four masters in order to be able to start the apprenticeship in the lower part of town. This means that you should talk to all those who do not quite approve of you yet. So whatever, that's what it sounds like if Constantino uh, 
Well, that's Constantino's comments on all the rest of them. Now, all we need... Well, we got Thorbins, but we'll talk to him once we're done here. All we need is the orc weapon and the uh, wolf skins, which we can actually get by talking to Bosper's old apprentice here, Bartok. Hey! How's it going? You're not from around here, are you? Never mind. Neither am I. Where did you hang around before? In the woods, hunting scavengers and wolves together with some hunters. But I gave it up. These are dangerous times. There's a lot of riffraff running around out there. Where can I find the other hunters? We had our camp outside near the tavern, halfway to Onar's farm. But I don't know where there is anyone left in the camp now. There used to be two of us here in town, until a few days ago. My friend Trokar is an excellent hunter. So, where is your friend Trokar now? Well, it's a curious story. Only a few days ago, we were both standing at the bar in Corrigan's Tavern, discussing the hunt. Don't ask me what happened next. I had had a few by then. I vaguely remember Trokar saying that he was going out to get a few swamp weed reefers. He never came back. Why does he sound so amused about his friend vanishing off the face of the earth? Didn't you go looking for him? No, but I reported it to the militia. But they haven't been able to find him yet. I hope he didn't get attacked by a wolf, or worse. What, in I'm town? afraid that I'll stumble over his body someday when I'm out hunting. I don't think I could bear that. <laughs> <laughs> Where does one get swamp weed reefers? Somewhere down at the harbor, as far as I know. All right, well, that's helpful. Bosper said you used to work for him. Yes, I did, but he was only interested in his blasted hides. I told him how dangerous it's gotten out there. He didn't really listen to me. Well, anyway, he paid well. I can't complain about that. Can you tell me anything else about him? <laughs> Bosper had one of his bows stolen recently in broad daylight. No Some way. Some guy just walked into his store, took a bow, and left. The thieves are getting more and more brazen. Sure sounds like it. Can you teach me something about hunting? I can teach you how to sneak properly and how to handle a bow. You would think you'd also be able to teach how to skin animals. He might actually. I've never tried it because I always learned it from Bosper first. Why don't we go hunting together? Hmm. With two, it isn't so dangerous. That's true. Do you know anything about hunting then? I mean, do you know how to skin an animal? Yes. All right, but I want to see 50 gold pieces. For that, you can keep the skins and sell them to Bosper. That's a fair deal, isn't it? Mm, Bosper buys them for 10 apiece. It only leaves us with 60, but we get a little more out of it. Here they are. Uh, if you want to learn Sneak, you can go for it. I don't need it, and there actually is a cheat that you can basically never require it in your life. Also, we can totally see Zardus' tower from here. I just realized that, and that's fucking hilarious. Let's go hunting. All right, follow me. Outside the south gate is a wood where we should find more than enough critters. Probably more than we'd like. Yeah, more than we'd like. Uh, but before we do that... By the explicit order of the honorable The Lord problem Hagen, with this is, uh, is Bartok is kind of stupid. Of I don't know if you noticed. An and he actually has a tendency to get himself killed by wolves out in the woods. I used to fear... Excuse me, sir? Beg your pardon? Is to begin uh, I used to be more of afraid of the uh, more dangerous things that we encounter out there that usually kill him. But lately, uh, he's been dying to the wolves more often than anything else, so we kind of need to we need to run some interference on his behalf once we're out there. And the uh, fireballs do quite a lot of good for us. That's the first I've heard of it. Everybody. So those woods, I told you to be careful exploring later. Uh, earlier, I mean. That's where we're heading now. This is the uh, one of the ways you can get into the city. As I mentioned, but you might remember what we encountered out here and why uh, why Bartok says it's so damn dangerous in the woods nowadays. So one of the issues is Bartok. All right, so much for you, filthy beast. Has a tendency to do that every time he kills something, and when he's encountering six wolves at once, they're all wailing on him while he's standing there taunting the one he just killed. 
So that's why I suggest we pull the wools ourselves using the Fuego balls. Except none of them pulled that time, which is interesting. So somehow I kind of cheated their AI a little bit. So we know that wolves have the uh, pack mentality. Wait a minute. Where they all aggro together. Um, but if they're far enough away, that just won't they won't trigger in unison, which makes it very convenient. Yeah, that's how you deal with those things. Great, deal with two more, please. Oh goodness sake, dude. I mean one of them is chopping you to bits. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't seem to take his own healing potions until he is quite injured. So we have to really keep him alive here. I recommend saving about every 10 steps out here. But yeah, make sure you get all the wolf skins. Now, you need to be ahead of the game here and know what's up ahead. You see something uh, creeping behind that uh, tree there. Bartok can't help himself. He's so about to cause think? some trouble with that. Should we go farther into the woods or not? You can back off now, but you will never get the chance to come out here with him again. And I'd rather him kind of do all the tanking for us. Let's go on. All right. Let's hope this works out. So he goes on and starts shooting at this thing. <laughs> We need to keep its attention away from him, and I died. That doesn't normally happen. Interesting. So what? Yes, yes. Oftentimes, he's able to kill it just with his arrows before it even uh, gets near him, but not always. But that's fine. So you can see, he took quite a hit there, but luckily he's going to heal himself back to full. But, of all things, the Shadow Beast doesn't scare him. We'll have to see uh, what really does. He seems to be out of arrows as well, because he's not using his bow anymore. But, blood flies are harmless. He can deal with them himself. Whatever, I guess we'll help him. Look at this piece of shit. As I said, save often. Uh-oh. Oh, now he has arrows. So yeah, I'm actually, um... I'm facing off against the orc here, which is a dangerous move. And Bartok basically one-shot it. But hey, we got our orc weapon. And yes, there is an even easier way to get an orc weapon, if you wish. And easier ways to get uh, wolf skins, That's but this it. is I'm the quickest. I'm going back to the city. It's just too dangerous out here for me, even with two of us. An orc right outside the city. Holy shit! So see ya. You can sell the skins to Bosper. And that I shall. So at least we've uh, made half the woods safe. There are dangerous things over there. Uh, I apparently don't have arrows. You'll see black goblins over there. Those are much tougher than the green goblins we fought so far. So I don't want to deal with those. But you can head that way. We'll probably do that next episode. I'm doing a little freelancing. If you head that way, there are a couple bandits in a cave. And uh, they can be quite easy to deal with. They can also be quite tough to deal with if you are not very careful and pull them properly. But I'll show you how to do that in the next episode. Uh, we're running out of time here, otherwise I would have done it now. But, at least we have everything we need to become an apprentice. So I guess while we're heading back, uh, since we're going for a mage, you might think that we would go for Constantino. Uh, but Constantino being an alchemist doesn't really help us because we can learn how to brew potions from so many other people. And Constantino's only task for you as an apprentice is to bring him mushrooms. Which sounds strange. But these dark mushrooms, which he collects, actually only pays... It doesn't even pay half as much as these bigger ones that he says aren't even as good. Uh, those dark mushrooms give you five mana points for every 50 of them you eat. 
So if you give them all to him and you're a mage, you're missing out on free mana. And all told, for all the mushrooms you can collect in the game, I think it gives you a grand total of like 8,000 or so gold. And the other two masters you can join can give you way more gold than that over the course of the game. So it is not worth it in any capacity. Um, the other, I'd say the, the, the downright most profitable one to join is Herod. Because you can effectively get an infinite amount of raw steel in the game and just keep making swords and selling them to him. Uh, at, you know, with enough work, you can uh, get the most money out of him. The thing is, you can only make swords one at a time. So imagine just hammering out one sword after the other just to get money. Meanwhile, working for Bosper, all we have to do is skin animals, which means we just l loot every wolf, shadow beast, warg, troll, sheep, b wild boar, everything we kill in the course of our travels, we just loot it. We can sell it for a huge profit to Bosper. And that is why I always go for Bosper. Hey, you! How about your approval, Master? Has Vatras given you his blessing? Yes. And did you also get the blessing of a priest of Inos? Yes, I did. Then you shall have my blessing as well. Oh, joy. No matter what path you decide to take, take pride in doing a good job, my boy. Oh, so fatherly. Um. Hey, you. What do you want? I want you to take this. I've got the orc weapon you wanted. Show me. It's been a while since I've had a weapon like this in my hands. I was a soldier back in the Orc War. Those were tough times, I can tell you. I think I we still live in tough times. I'm impressed. He says back in the Orc War. I think there's been more than one war of the Orcs, but he's acting like this isn't currently an Orc War. Can I sign on as an apprentice with a different master? You're a good man. I'll give you my approval. Brian will still be here for a while. And a strong lad to take his place will turn up in time. Good to know. At least you won't be alone, you grumpy old man. Now, if, you, uh, if you're going to be a paladin or mercenary, I can understand you wanting to go work for Herod. If you're going to be a mercenary, again, there's no reason to work for Herod because you can learn how to make weapons from somebody else. Uh, so it might make sense as a paladin, but it really only makes sense as a mercenary because the best mercenary weapons can only be acquired by forging. And Harrod will not teach you how to make magic ore weapons because he's a bit of a jerk like that. About the wolf skins, I've got them here. Great! I knew you would be suitable for this job. Here's the pay I promised you. And what do you think? Isn't this better work than banging away at swords all day, or filling little bottles in a dusty chamber? I 100% agree. I want to start as your apprentice. Eh, <laughs> great. You seem to know the basics already. Harrod thinks you're a good man. Thorben gave you his blessing. I'm not all that pious, but I'm fine with it. Constantino Heathen. says you can sign up wherever you want for all he cares. And Matteo says you're worth your weight in gold. This means you have the approval of all masters. You can work for me at any time if you want. I'm in. You aren't going to regret this. I think we'll be able to work together well. Excellent. I've got a few skins for you. Wolf skin, that's good. Ah, even a shadow beast skin. Those are worth a lot. Good work. I'll bet Come they are. Come see me again when you have more. So that's quite a profit there, just in that one shadow beast skin. There you are again. Here I am again. What are my tasks as an apprentice? That's easy. Bring me as many pelts as you can get. I'll pay you a better price for them than any of the other traders would give you. Apart from that, you needn't show up here in the shop. I can get along just fine by myself. And where am I supposed to sleep? I don't have any room for you here. They're bound to have a bed for you in the hotel at the marketplace. Herod is actually the only master who actually gives you lodging, which is something all uh, all master craftsmen were supposed to do back in the day, I think. Although I'm not sure if there are really a whole lot of laws around apprenticeships. 
back in the lawless days of the Dark Ages. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think that uh, about does it for today. Oops. Trying to do the pivot. Um, so yeah, we are we are now a respective citizen, which means we could get into the upper quarter of town if we want. There really isn't much to see up there, but we'll do that next time just for the hell of it. Uh, but now, at least now we have a full-time job and can get uh, get some money in our pockets. So until next episode, thank you all very kindly for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch if you want to see some live stream shenanigans every weekend. Or subscribe to my stream archive channel if you want to see the uh, follow-up VODs. Follow me on Twitter if you care. Again, I don't seem to do a whole lot there, but why the hell not? Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful night.